When we're working on conversions in chemistry, sometimes we need to do more than one step in our conversion. Sometimes we have just one step, sometimes we have multiple steps. Conversion steps and conversion factors can be combined in one calculation or completed stepwise. I'll show you both methods as we go through these examples. We want to make sure as you do conversion factors, make sure that you keep track of your units. Even if you forget how to do things, often if you keep track of units, that can help give you that clue to get you to that next step. For metric conversions, we want to make sure before we start doing more than one step that we actually need more than one step. So make sure that you can distinguish between one or two step conversions. For one step conversions, that's typically a compound unit, so like milligrams, to the base unit to grams or from grams to milligrams. So you're talking about a unit that has one prefix and the, and the base unit to just the base unit. A two-step conversion is when we're looking at two different compound units. So you have something like milligrams and micrograms and you're trying to convert between those. You could have milligrams and kilograms and other types of compound units where you have different prefixes in front of the same base unit. For these types of conversions, these are going to require two steps. So we're going to look at examples of what, how we actually do these two-step conversions. So in this example, a doctor's order prescribed a dosage of 0 0.150 milligrams of Synthroid. If tablets contain 75 micrograms, so notice MCG is the same as the micro, of Synthroid, how many tablets are required to provide the prescribed medication? So we'll go through our same steps we did for a one-step conversion. We need to identify what our given and needed quantities are, and then we're going to write a plan to convert the units. Make sure to break the problem into steps that you know how to do. If you don't have a conversion factor directly from milligrams to micrograms, which we haven't done in this class yet, then you're going to need to break it up into more than one step so that you can actually get it from what you know to what you need to know. We're going to then do our qualities and conversion factors, and then finally we're going to set up the problem and solve it. Many people will try and skip directly to setting up the problem, and sometimes that's going to get, get you into a lot of trouble here. Now, in this problem, we know that the doctor wants you to have 0 0.150 milligrams of Synthroid. So that's what we know. We want to find the number of tablets that we need for micrograms. So we want to think, we want to get from the milligrams to tablets. Now, we definitely don't have a direct way of doing this. But if we take the milligrams and we convert that into micrograms or MCG, we do have something that tells us how many micrograms are in each tablet. So if we get, can get from milligrams to micrograms, we can then get from micrograms to tablets. So I've broken this up into steps, but I don't have a direct conversion between milligrams and micrograms. So I'm going to need to break this down into more steps, because I can go from milligrams to grams, then I can go from grams to micrograms, then finally to tablets. So if I have 0 0.150 milligrams, I'm going to use some sort of conversion factor to get from milligrams to grams for this first step. So remember we're always multiplying by a fraction. So we want grams on the top of this, milligrams on the bottom. 
So we need an equivalence between grams and milligrams. If we look at our conversion factor, one milligram is equal to 10 to the negative third grams. So our 10 to the negative third is on the top here, and one on the bottom. Put this over one so that we have our uh, fractions lined up. If we multiply this through, I'm going to have 0.50, 0, 10 tens the negative fourth grams. Milligrams are going to cancel out. We're going to be left with our units of grams here. But we need micrograms to be able to use these tablets. So I'm going to have to do another step where I take this grams and I convert to micrograms. Now you would want to show, leave all of your steps as you go through these, but I'm going to, just for space, the negative fourth grams, moving that back over. I'm going to need something that relates micrograms and grams. If I look at one, Microgram. Micro is 10 to the negative sixth grams. Place this over one again. So notice this is very similar to how I did the, the other uh, one. Micro is 10 to the negative sixth. One. So notice the one goes with the micro for grams, 10 to the negative six goes with the grams. I multiply this through, get 1.50 times 10 to the second micrograms, or you could also write this as 150 dot micrograms. Do make sure that you have this decimal place in here since that zero is significant. Now, 150 micrograms I've gotten, I've taken care of this step, I've taken care of this step, now I need to get from micrograms to tablets. I have 150 micrograms that I need, so I need to figure out how many tablets I need to give this patient. Each, it, so we need an equivalence that will get me from micrograms to tablets. If we look, we have 75 micrograms is equal to one tablet. So we can create these equivalencies from the problem. So this is for this specific problem. So once again, I'm going to do my multiply by a fraction. I have one tablet, 75 micrograms, multiply through, and I can give this patient two tablets. my final answer. So do make sure that when you're going through these problems, you make a plan, you figure out what you're actually looking for, and always keep that in mind. You want to make sure that you're going directly toward that type of problem. Notice also that throughout this problem, I labeled everything meticulously. We'll see that as I do more and more examples.